welcome to my 2024 desk setup video. And how am I gonna make a desk setup video without first paying homage to the desk itself? This is a sit-stand desk from Uplift. It's 80 inches wide by 30 inches in depth. And I opted to go with the walnut tabletop because I think that just looks the best for the vibe that I'm going. I know it's pretty plain back here, but I just painted it black and I'm looking to get some artwork up there shortly. Now the magic behind the sit-stand desk is in the adjustable frame, which you can control by this angled keypad right here. The angle keypad is pretty dope. It allows you to control up to four different positions, making it really easy to set a standing height, a sitting height, a kind of sitting height, and a kind of standing height. And when you're checking out, you can choose what kind of keypad you want. I chose the angled keypad because I think it's a little bit easier to find and use the buttons without having to kind of peek under the desk and see what's going on. And they can go up to a max height of 50.9 inches and down to a minimum height of 25.3 inches. Meaning if you're between 6'9 and 5'4, you're gonna be able to find a comfortable position with this desk. Another feature I like about this desk is that when you raise it or you lower it, the motors are super silent and they also offer a anti-collision system. So if something was to get in the way while it was going up, it would stop it. So it wouldn't knock it over or break either the motors or whatever it's running into. That's big brain from the desk. All right, the most asked question I get about this desk is, is it sturdy? This is the desk at its highest 50.9 inches and I feel completely confident with it. It rarely ever wobbles. This is me actually trying to push it. So even at 50.9 inches, it's super stable, super sturdy. You're not gonna have any issues with your stuff falling off of it anytime soon. Okay, I think we get it. The desk is amazing. And outside of it being incredibly heavy to move around, I have no complaints, it's great. All right, with that being said, let's move on to the main attraction, which I think is this 49 inch monitor. All right, this beautiful monstrosity of a monitor is the LG 49 Ultra Extra Super Wide Monitor. I'm not even gonna bother trying to say the actual name because it's just ridiculous. If you're new here, hello, I'm Jeremiah. I'm a self-taught software engineer and also content creator. So those are the primary workflows that I use this monitor to help me accomplish. And I've been using this monitor for nearly a year and so far it's been amazing. There are a handful of pros and just a few cons you gotta be worried about if you're interested in this monitor. All right, Let's start with the pros. I think the color accuracy is very, very good. I'd say the Retina display on the Mac OS that I use is amazing, and I would rank this LG Ultra Wide display slightly under that as far as color accuracy goes. Moving along, I'd say the size is another obvious pro. It's a 32 by nine aspect ratio, which allows a lot of screen width, but not so much height. Now I don't game a ton, but when I do, it's a very immersive experience. And I think I'm gonna credit that to the slight curvature of this monitor that makes you feel like you're a part of whatever game you're playing. Now you're either a one monitor person or a two monitor person. And for me, I like one monitor. This monitor specifically is the equivalent if you were to stack two 27 inch ultra high definition monitors side by side, except you don't get that bezel in the middle. But if we're being honest, which I still think we're doing, I rarely ever split my applications to just the left and right side of the screen. Even half of the monitor is way too much for one application. Realistically, I typically use my applications in thirds. Typically, I use Slack for coordinating with my team, Notion for iterating on content ideas, and then the third space is just whatever project I'm currently working on. Now, I'm not sure if you can tell, but I have a huge window here on this side of my office, but this monitor also has an anti-glare surface treatment, so it really cuts down on the glare from this huge window over here. All right, and the last pro that I'll mention about this monitor is it has a built-in KVM switch, meaning that on your right side of your monitor, you can use your PC setup for gaming, and on the left-hand side of your monitor, you can plug it into your Mac for it to work. And not only that, you can use one mouse and one keyboard to switch in between the two systems with this built-in KVM feature. Okay, those were the pros now on to the cons. If you're in a Zoom meeting or a Slack huddle and you want to share your screen, it's nearly impossible to share your entire screen because this screen is massive. And if you try to share that with anyone else who doesn't also have a massive screen, it's gonna show up like this, like really tiny. So typically if I wanna screen share, I have to screen share window by window which is kind of annoying since I do a ton of screen shares for my day job. Also, the monitor stand takes up a ton of desk space. It's not a big deal for me because my desk is so big, but if you're running low on space for your desk setup, you might wanna consider adding a monitor arm to free up some of that desk space. If you're a serious gamer, this monitor may not be for you. Just be aware it has a five millisecond response time and it's 60 Hertz refresh rate. For productivity in casual gaming, it's completely fine. But if you're trying to become a pro gamer, this probably isn't for you. All right. 
last but not least, my biggest gripe with this monitor is where the system controls are. I got a pretty big wingspan, like you can't even see it in frame right now. But if you're at the center of the desk and you want to change the input settings, you have to reach all the way over to the corner of the desk and that gets tiring quick. So LG, if you're listening, please move the controls to the middle of the screen so I don't have to tear my rotator cuff trying to change the input settings. Okay, while I do love my standing desk, I have flat feet, weak ankles, and scoliosis. So when I need to sit after two minutes of standing, I'm sitting in this chair. And this bad boy is a Soji mesh office chair. I got this chair in Tellure Black. The seat height adjusts from 16.4 inches to 21 inches. It features tilt tension control for supportive reclining, 4D arm support for neck and shoulders, and my favorite is the waterfall seat edges so that your legs are comfortable when you're sitting for long hours. Now, I've seen some chairs for $1,200, but for $499, this is a solid chair, and I don't have any complaints about it. Not sponsored, this is just a really good chair. Now, if you'd be so kind to join me back at the desk for this keyboard, this is the IQ Unix F96 in coral blue, and this thing has been with me for four to three years running, and it's amazing. This chunky boy has an aluminum case on it, which is great, it's very sturdy, but it's 2.5 pounds, which is the equivalent weight of five iPhone 15s. That thing thick. The battery capacity on this guy is probably one of the underrated features of it. It's up to 260 days of battery off of one single charge, which holds up for me. I think I charge this once every year and I'm pretty much good to go. For the keys, I went with the Cherry MX Reds, which sound like this. Now, if you're into that kind of thing, the keys are hot swappable, so you can easily swap out one key for another without having to solder or anything like that. And my absolute favorite feature, hands down, is the fact that it can easily switch between three different devices, which I use pretty much regularly, which includes my work laptop, my personal laptop, and my gaming PC. And it can switch between those three almost instantaneously. My biggest complaint with this keyboard is how tall it is off of any surface, which when I say it out loud is such a silly complaint, but carpal tunnel is a real thing. So that's why I use this Razer Wrist Rest Razor wrist rest, really hard to say, but it's just a little piece of soft fabric that I use to put right in front of the keyboard. And that allows a more ergonomic way to type on the keyboard without having to put in all those gains, put in all those strains. Now, speaking of wrist fatigue, let's talk mice. Mouses, definitely mice. This is the internet's favorite mouse and it's the Logitech MX Master 3. And it's the mouse that I was using until I found this guy. This is also a Logitech MX Master series, but it's the MX Master Vertical. Now I work at this desk for my nine to five and then my content creation and then any coding side projects that I'm doing. So I spend a ton of time using the mouse that's associated with this desk. And while I love the MX Master 3, I still got a little bit of wrist cramp from being here for so many hours. And that's why I started using the Logitech MX Master Vertical. Now, apparently the optimal position for your wrist isn't completely flat, but it's at 57 degrees. And that is the angle of this mouse from the desk. That 57 degree tilt feels so much more natural than the mouse that I was using previously. And I haven't had any wrist issues with this guy since using it. Now this mouse has 4,000 DPI high tracking precision sensors, which results in four times less hand movement to reduce that hand fatigue. And like I mentioned before, I run three different systems and this mouse can support, did you guess it, three separate systems. And with the click of a button, I can easily switch between my gaming PC and my work laptop. The battery life on this is pretty good. I charge it maybe once every six months and it's good to go. Now with this mouse, you also have the option to use a companion app with it. The companion app is called the Logi Options Plus app. This app allows you to reconfigure all of the buttons on this mouse to make it work for you and your workflows. Now there is a bit of weirdness about the vertical mouse. The first thing that I don't like is that it doesn't have this horizontal scroll. When you're editing on a timeline like DaVinci or Final Cut Pro, that horizontal scroll is clutch. Now with the LG Vertical, there is no horizontal scroll button, which is kind of sad, but I figured out I can find a similar result if I program this click button in the middle of the scroll wheel to be my horizontal scroll. So now I just click this and I can move left and right on my timeline. Now the natural handshake position on the vertical mouse is great, but I do not get over a ton. All right, let's talk laptops. This guy right here is my M1 Pro 2021 16 inch MacBook Pro. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM and 500 gigabytes of storage. My desk setup is pretty much run through this one USB-C. So one cable to plug in and then now I'm up and running with my setup. I'll wait, there we go. 
Now I'm a base model guy through and through, and this is the base model of the 2021 version. And while 500 gigabytes might not sound like a lot, it is more than enough for me because typically when I'm doing any sort of project, I'm working off of external SSDs. These are the Samsung T7 SSDs with really fast write and read time. So I'm not really filling this up anytime soon. And even at 16 gigabytes of unified memory or RAM, I'm still able to breeze through web development, video editing, and writing those strongly worded emails. This thing has been amazing and has treated me so well and I've been able to create so many amazing projects on this, but I'm probably gonna look to upgrade it in the future just because it's getting to be about four years old and I want the new new. Now my MacBook Pro sits on a Mac Elise stand. It was only about $30, but it, it holds up. It does everything I need to do, which is to hold my laptop. Now you're probably asking yourself, wow, Jeremiah, you have a ton of things on your desk. How are you powering all of these things? And I'd reply, I'm using the Anchor 577 docking station. It's not visible because I have it glued up under my desk. This is a 13 in one power station and this poor guy is responsible for managing all of my cables on my desk setup. Now I picked this docking station because of what it offers. It offers 4K dual display support, 10 gigabits USB-C data, ethernet, audio, an SD 4.0 input, 85 watt charging for laptops, and 18 watt charging for phones. And the fact that I have all of my systems running through one docking station makes it, once again, super easy for me to switch between system to system. Now, Anchor did reach out to sponsor this video, and I am a true Anchor fan through and through. I've been using it for a long time. I just forgot to reply to the email to accept the sponsorship. So, Anchor, it's a really good power station. Buy it. That one's on the house, Anchor. <laughs> Sorry I didn't reply, but I highly recommend Anchor products. They're really good. Now, I mentioned I work from home, and if I'm taking any meetings, I'm taking them via a webcam, and the webcam that I typically use is a Logitech Brio 4K. This webcam is pretty solid. It offers 4K at 30 frames per second and up to 60 frames per second at 1080p. Now, since it's a Logitech product, you know there's a companion app. The companion app for this guy is called the Logitune, which gives you access to change the exposure, the field of view, the saturation, to get that crispy look on your presentations and on your calls. But lately, I've been using the Brio as a backup camera just in case my primary camera fails. I'm a specific type of software engineer called a developer advocate, which means I spend a ton of my time making video educational content for other software engineers. And I want that content to be just the highest level possible. And there's only so far you can go with a sleek and slim webcam like that. So that's why I use a bigger camera for my more serious content creation at work. With the black on black, it's kind of hard to see it, which I kind of like, but it's the Sony A6400 with the 16 millimeter Sigma lens. This was the first camera I got when I started YouTube, but now I use it as a webcam because the quality that you get from it is just so spot on. This lens has an F1.4, which means you get that incredibly blurry background, making you look so crisp and cinematic. And, and I've noticed people treat you more seriously when you have a blurry background. As I mentioned, I'm always trying to make my setup just a little bit better especially at work. Right now you're listening to the wireless DJI microphone. This is what I use for my content creation. But when I join meetings at work, I'm now using this guy. I upgraded from the Blue Yeti microphone to the Shure MV7. And since I'm too lazy to sync it up to my camera properly, this is what it really sounds like when it's working and hooked up. And of course, this comes with a companion app so you can fine tune how this actually sounds. You can change the gain, how far it is from your mouth, as well as if these lights are gonna be on, flashing and blinking and that kind of stuff. And last but not least, we have the gaming PC, which is the Omen 30 liter gaming desktop PC. It has an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 graphics card, 10th generation Intel Core i7 processor, one terabyte SSD, and you know this is the real deal because the RAM sticks are RGB. Now this isn't just my PC, it's my gaming PC, and we're best friends. I only play Warzone on this thing, but even at max settings, I can still pretty much glide through any lobby. I'm not really into building my own custom PCs. What do I look like tinkering around with a screwdriver? I know what I'm good at in life and using screwdrivers is not one of those things. So this is a pre-built and I honestly think this day and age, pre-built is the way to go because they're just so good right out of the box. The links for everything will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching and just like always, I will see you on the next one. See ya.